All right, so basically what we're starting to do here in Gibbs free energy is we're starting to move away from gases a little bit and starting to get into aqueous solutions, which consequently, if you're in the realm of biochemistry or biology, it's very useful for talking about reactions that occur in solution in cells, like enzymatic reactions. Okay, we no longer deal with gases in that, in that state. So when we do that, we have to deal with, instead of, you know, instead of dealing with partial pressures and, um, you know, enthalpy and entropy, one easy way to get free energy is to use something called an equilibrium constant. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about relating the equilibrium constant to delta G. Now, if you're watching this in the context of physical chemistry, you likely have seen equilibrium constants in gen chem and probably also organic and some other classes perhaps as well. So for a generic reaction, A moles of A plus B moles of B is an equilibrium with C moles of C, the equilibrium expression for the constant is given by this. Now, I, what I tend to do just to denote this from not an equilibrium, which we're going to get into in a little bit, if my concentration that I'm talking about of whatever, whatever substance it is, is at equilibrium, I like to put the subscript of EQ down here just to denote that it is at equilibrium. So for all the videos I do from now on where I'm talking about equilibrium concentrations, I'm going to put in a subscript down here EQ. If I don't put that, you're to assume it's not at equilibrium, in which case we won't be dealing with KEQ because this is at equilibrium. So the expression is the product of the products divided by the product of the reactants. What are the products? Well, we only have C here as a product, so it's going to be the concentration of C to the little c power. Okay, so whatever the, the number is out in front of here, that's the power of the concentration. So I divide by the product of the reactants. So one of the reactants is substance A, and I take that to the little a power, right? This is, I'll do this in a green color, this is a little a power. And then divided by concentration of B to the little b power. If I had, say, you know, on here concentration of, you know, or a plus D moles of D, then in the products here I would put concentration of D to little d power and so on and so forth and for, how, how, for however many reactants and products you have. This is going to be what you use. The stipulation on this, however, is that solids are not included in this expression. So solids are not included. Liquids are not included. What you do include, though, are gases and things in the aqueous phase. These are what are included in the expression. Okay, so if for instance, this was plus D moles of D and it was a solid, then this would not be included and then you just have C over AB. Okay, so what they do here in this expression where you have delta G standard is equal to negative RT ln of KEQ, the KEQ right here is literally just it's, it is, in itself is a function, and the function is this. It's just what we just showed, product of the products divided by product of the reaction, reactants to their respective powers. So you can go ahead and calculate the equilibrium constant if you know these concentrations. A lot of times the equilibrium constant for common reactions is known, and you can just simply plug it in here. Now what is delta G with this little degree sign right here? Whenever we're in physical chemistry and we're talking about state functions, for example, so state function we've seen, delta G, delta A is Helmholtz free energy, delta H is enthalpy, delta S is entropy, and we have others. We can even have internal energy, which is delta U. But anytime I have these little degree signs right here, that implies that we are talking about at equilibrium. Okay, and these are also standard. These are standard um, temperature and pressure, okay? But the key is that we're talking about these at equilibrium, okay? If I were to show you this, delta G, without that, that is not at equilibrium. And sometimes those are needed to be calculated because, say, if we're in a biological system, we're talking about enzymes, we're not at equilibrium really ever, okay? So I could use delta G standard to calculate delta G not at equilibrium. We'll talk about how to do that in a little bit. So if I'm talking about KEQ, that's at equilibrium. Delta G standard is at equilibrium, so this lines up. So delta G at equilibrium is equal to negative ideal gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin times the natural log of KEQ. 
And here is the way we put it like that. And that's what we use to calculate delta G at equilibrium. Now, many times, it's not useful just to know the delta G at equilibrium because very few reactions are at equilibrium, especially in biological systems. And if you're trying to do mass production of things and you're doing chemical reactions to do that, if you're at equilibrium, then your production has stopped, right? So you want it to, you want to force things towards the products. You may have to use Le Chatelier's principle for that, but we want to find the delta G at or when we're not at equilibrium because we want reactions to more or less be spontaneous, say if we're doing um, mass production of things, okay? To do that, to find this delta G not at equilibrium, notice it doesn't have that degree sign, I have to use the delta G at equilibrium, but I have to add what's termed a correction factor. The correction factor is plus RT times the natural log of Q. Well, what is Q? Well, Q is the reaction quotient, and Q itself is mathematically defined exactly the same way as KEQ, except Q is not at equilibrium. So notice we still have the product of the products divided by the product of the reactants to their respective powers for that same reaction shown here. But notice I haven't indicated EQ here. So if I don't indicate EQ right here, notice it's not there, you're to assume this is not at equilibrium. So Q, reaction quotient, is not at equilibrium. So in other words, right here, when I basically plug in this expression for Q right here, which is all of this, I'm going to get this long expression for a delta G not at equilibrium. So I have this first term, which is my delta G at equilibrium, minus RT times the natural log of the KEQ. Notice I have these equilibrium notations here to denote that. But then to get the delta G, I have to add on the correction factor, plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient, which is all this. And then just remember all this that's in here. This is the equilibrium constant, okay? In most cases, the equilibrium constant, this is something you may be able to look up in a table. A lot of these are tabulated at given temperatures. The reaction quotient is something you would have to calculate. And to do that, you would have to know all of these concentrations. You have to know the concentration of C, A, and B. Because if you're at different points in, away from equilibrium, these concentrations can vary a lot, okay? And, you know, for example, C could be 1,000 millimolar, it could be 5,000 millimolar, A and B could vary just as much, okay? You don't know what these concentrations are until you actually are able to measure them, but once you know them at a particular point in time, okay, then you can just plug these in, multiply it out, and get the delta G not at equilibrium. So again, why is it that the delta G not at equilibrium is so important? Because very few things that we deal with in real life are at equilibrium. Like I said, if you're trying to mass produce something, okay, say this is a reaction where, you're where you are mass producing something. If C is what you're trying to produce, you want this reaction to go way to the right, okay? In other videos, when we do Le Chatelier's principle, we'll talk about why that is. So if you aren't doing this and it comes to equilibrium, the rate of the forward and reverse reactions are the same, you're not getting any more product and you'll be fired because you couldn't figure out how to get it all the way to the right. Also, if you're in biological systems, biochemistry dealing with enzymes, in the context of biology, no, there's no reactions that are at equilibrium all the time. Nothing's ever at equilibrium. You're always going to have a delta G that's not. And so sometimes it's important to figure out where away from equilibrium the reaction is. And to do that, you have to calculate this delta G right there. Okay? It turns out some reactions in biochemistry are positive in delta G, some are negative. And it can be important to figure out how negative and how positive things are. Um, for instance, if you're trying to determine the work capacity of the cell at a given point. Okay? So that's why that's important, and this is how you go, go about calculating delta G, again, not at equilibrium, okay? So I hope this video helped. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about a similar way to do this, but we're going to do it for oxidation-reduction reactions, and that's going to be dealing with the Nernst equation. We're also, in another video, going to do an example of how to use this using actual numbers. See you in future videos.